every who down in Hoover liked Christmas a lot, but the Grinch who lived just north of Hoover did not. The Grinch hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Oh, please don't ask why. No one quite knows. It could be that his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could perhaps be that his shoes were too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. Whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve, hating the Who's, staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm, lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every Who down in Whoville beneath was busy now hanging a mistletoe wreath and they're hanging their stockings he snarled with a sneer tomorrow is christmas it's practically here and he growled his grinch fingers nervously drumming i must find some way to stop christmas from coming for tomorrow he knew all the who girls and boys would wake bright and early. They'd rush for their toys. And then, oh, the noise, the noise, 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 noise. That's the one thing he hated. The noise, 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 noise. The who, young and old, would sit down to a feast. And they feast, feast. Feast, feast. They would feast on who pudding and rare who roast beast, which was something that the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together. With Christmas bells ringing, they'd stand hand in hand and the who's would start singing. They'd sing, and they'd sing, and they'd sing, 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 sing. And the more the Grinch thought of the whole Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. I'll never get any sleep if I allow one more peep. But if they must sing, then let them sing only in church, and I'll never hear a thing. Why? For 53 years, I've put up with it now. I must stop this Christmas from coming, but how? Then, he got an idea, an awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do, the Grinch laughed in his throat and he made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat and he chuckled and clucked. What a great Grinchy trick! With his coat and his hat, I look just like Saint Nick! <laughs> All I need is a reindeer! The Grinch looked around, but since reindeer are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? No, the Grinch simply said, if I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog Max, then he took some red thread and he tied a big horn on the top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh and he hitched up old Max.
Then the Grinch said, Get up! And the sleigh started down towards the homes where all the who's lay a snooze in the town. All the windows were dark, quiet snow filled the air. All the who's were all dreaming, sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first little house on the square, the old cringy cross he swam to the roof, empty bags in his face. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch. The Santa could do it, so could the cringe. He got stuck only once for a moment or two. Then he stuck his head out of the fireplace flue, where the little who's stockings all hung in a row. These stockings, he grinned, are the first things to go. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant around the whole room, and he took every present. Pop guns and bicycles, roller skates, drums, checkerboards, tricycles, popcorn, and plums. And he stuffed them in bags. Then the Grinch, very nimbly, stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimney. Then he slunk to the ice box. He took the Who's Feast. He took the Who's Pudding. He took the Roast Beast. Yet as he ascended with all of Who's Treats, the wind that he landed did not feel so sweet. For people were missing. Among all these gains and people were counted more precious than fame. And darkness descended. And then, with a sigh, the Grinch pondered this mystery and then wondered why. Just what was I thinking in grabbing whose stash? For surely it wasn't about all the cash. Because I was lonely, I caused so much trouble. I took the Who's gifts and his sweets, double trouble. I'd leave Who bereft and all in a muddle. Then I felt the light coming into my own piggy toes, and upward it came to the tip of my nose. My eyes were lit up, and out of my mouth came a voice that was low, just as low as a mouse. There may be a way you can still save the day, for it's just Christmas morning, this light seemed to say. I'll carry whose goodies strapped tight in my sack and slip down the chimney with them on my back. And as who awakens, I'll knock on the door and give him a pudding and then even more, I'll tell him, how lucky I am to be me, to have who to stand with in front of his tree, and to remember our friendship, I'll take a selfie. For the spirit of Christmas now dwells within me. He cleaned out the icebox as quick as a flash, why the Grinch even took their last con of who hashed, and he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee, and now, grin the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. And the Grinch grabbed the tree, and he started to shove, when he heard a small sound, like the coo of a dove. He turned around fast, and he saw a small who, little Cindy Lou who, who was not more than two. We'd got out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why? Why are you stealing our Christmas tree? Why? But you know that Grinch was so smart and so slick. He tore up a line, he tore it up quick. Why, my sweet little tot, the fake Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it home from my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there, then I'll bring it back here. 
and his fib filled the child and he patted her head and he got her a drink and he sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou Who went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. And the last thing he took was the log for their fire. And he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. On their walls, he left nothing but hooks and some wine. And the one speck of food that, that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. And he did the same thing to the other whose houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other whose mouses. It was a quarter past dawn. All the who's still a bed, all the who's still a snooze. When he packed up his sled, packed it up with their presents, the ribbons, the wrappings, the tags, and the tinsel, the trimmings, the trappings. A thousand feet up, up the side of Mount Crumpet, he rode with his loto the tip-top to dump it. Poo poo to the who's, he was grinchously humming. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up. I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open for a minute or two. Then the who's down in Whoville will all cry boo hoo. That's a noise, said the Grinch, that I simply must hear. So he paused, and the Grinch put his hand to his ear, and he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low, then it started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad, why, this sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was merry, very. He stared down at Whoville, the Grinch popped his eyes, and he shook what he saw was a shocking surprise. Every Who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, were singing without any presence at all. He hadn't stolen Christmas, it came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet, ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes or bags. And he puzzled three hours. Then his puzzle was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light. And he bought back the toys and the food for the feast. And he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beast.
Grin the Grinch, that I simply must hear. So he paused, and the Grinch put his hand to his ear, and he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low. Then it started to grow. And he brought back the toys and the food for the feast. And he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beef 